One thing that my lab has been very involved in is looking at how different specific patterns of breathing impact brain states, sleep, hormone levels, et cetera. And physiological size, which you mentioned, were discovered in the 30s, which are a spontaneous pattern of breathing that people and animals do where they inhale twice and then exhale longer. So it's inhale. <sighs> So you'll notice I breathed in and then I snuck in a little bit more air on a second inhale before, and then I gave a long exhale. So it's double inhale followed by an exhale. Typically the inhales are through the nose and the exhales through the mouth, although not always. We do that spontaneously during sleep. We do it under conditions of claustrophobia when carbon dioxide in the bloodstream gets too high. This is nature's way of offloading carbon dioxide because it maximal, that second inhale maximally expands the alveoli sacs of the lungs, which then pulls carbon dioxide into those sacs of the lungs, and then you offload more carbon dioxide on the exhale. It's seen in animals, seen in humans. It's reflexive, but you can also do it deliberately. So through some consulting work with various groups, um, we've been testing this in the laboratory, we've been looking at this, how physiological size, in my understanding and what from what I've seen, it's still preliminary, but it seems to be the fastest way to adjust your stress level down. And you can do this while walking down the hall. So that's a real time tool. We've somehow lost track of the fact that like stress can mobilize us. Stress is good for the Im immune system under in short periods of time. So much like heart rate variability is good. We now know that you want a lot of heart rate variability across the day. You want um, stress level variability. And so we shouldn't be so dismayed about a, a spike in stress. Now it's spikes in stress that we don't come down from that are problematic. And so having tools like physiological size or having a breathwork practice can be very powerful. I'm a big fan of real time tools because they are based on neurons and neural circuits that we all have built into us. There's no learning involved. You have to know what to do, but once you know what to do, you can do it first time and every time it's mother nature's design. She designed these. When you see something in the brains and nervous systems of all species, including humans, that's, that achieves the same purpose, there's a good chance that it was designed for that purpose. There are some practices that involve lying down, and it's not meditation, and it's not hypnosis, but listening to a script that has you doing long exhale breathing combined with a sort of body scan and done for about 10 minutes a day. Our lab has found that First of all, it puts the body and brain into deep states of relaxation that mimic sleep. Really activating that serotonergic parasympathetic pathway is possible using these tools. Some of my work with people in foreign and domestic military special operations, those guys use these tools sometimes to try and decompress so that they can lean back into what is arguably the highest risk, highest consequence profession of all, right? They're putting their life on the line every time they deploy. But what you're really talking about is training your parasympathetic nervous system to engage on demand. Your ability to switch back into a relaxed parasympathetic state is going to dictate how well you'll, you're gonna be able to perform when yeah. that next patient comes in or that next key event in life hits.